Today I want to share with you a pattern in tatting for a veil, like this one. Let's do this. The first thing you need to take care of is a little bit of planning. In here I have drawn a different, different types of veils. And I just want to show you that there, is different, there are different choices to make and you need to figure out how which type of veil you want and how much work you want to put into it. So if you choose this long one, you need to perhaps do bigger pieces, like a, a big lace piece, like this. Or for a shorter one, you might need to do some simpler things and perhaps something like this on the back, I don't know, and something on the front blusher. And the uh, this one, there will be really <laughs> there will be a lot of fabric, so you might sort of say, okay, do I want to sit here for months and months and months and and do tatting? And of course, perhaps you want to, but if you're a beginner, perhaps there will be a very long. It will <laughs> it will be a lot of work, and it'll be a lot of the same work. And in here, you might have like a long train, and it will be like a ridiculously big project. So maybe here is the ground. So it will be very, very long, and it will be a very, very big project to make. So if you're a beginner, perhaps a very long veil will be too much of a project. You might burn out. And a shorter project might not be what you want. So figure out a a pattern that is simple enough for you to actually finish this because if you if you quit halfway then you've spent half of the work and and you just throw it out and that's yeah i've chosen to do the the smaller veil as you can probably hear on my <laughs> tone i am not completely done yet but it's taken about 2 weeks in between school and work to to get to the point where i can i can put lace on the bottom here and I have a little bit of a different thing at the back here and it's going to lay sort of at the back and be a little intricate detail I hope <laughs> I'm not completely done yet next thing is the the yarn and honestly it does not take a lot of yarn when you're working as small as I am. I am working with a shuttle. You can use a needle if you want to. But I do think for this type of project you need the the smaller, the thinner, nicer yarn for it. You can really not use sort of knitting yarn for this because yeah, I don't know. It's your wedding. <laughs> So this is how what it looks like what it looked like when I bought it and I've used it for a lot of projects. So it it really doesn't there's not a lot of yarn. You don't use a lot of yarn for this. So the pattern that I've made and I I'll be translating it in the next coming days. It's only in Danish right now, but you can see the diagram on my blog. And in the pattern in the pattern you can see how to turn here. But I have chosen not to do that, because if you're a beginner like me, or not perhaps a total beginner, but sort of a beginner still, it will be better to to make smaller pieces and then sew them together on the, the project afterwards, rather than do a very long piece. Because I, I think I ended up at about four meters of... I don't know what that is in inches, by the way, <laughs> but I, I ended up in about four meters and that is just a lot of that's a lot of tatting and and can you imagine if i made a a something uh, after a couple of, of meters and then i had to throw out two meters of of tatting that will just be heartbreaking to me so to me i just find the smallest piece i can i can make and still sort of sew it together and have it make sense and look as if it's a a, a continuous piece um so that i can i can yeah so so that i can i can glue the ends down and then have it look nice and and i can keep working without having the fear of suddenly making a mistake and having to rip out or to cut off a big chunk because it is a it is a lot of work and it it is oh i hate throwing stuff out 
especially if I have if I spent blood and tears in making it. So this is how I'm going to to put it together on the veil. I'm just going to sew it on like this. Yeah, I'm sorry about the the dog hair in this. I'm I'm really trying to keep it out, but he's just he's shedding so much. <laughs> but to 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 put it together, I am then going to take these pearls and put them in between the pieces. At least at the at the back. I don't think I want the pearls next to my face necessarily, but at the at the bottom I want these pearls. But really, like you can see in this, there's a little nick in the in the <laughs> in one of the rings. So perhaps I can just throw this out and, and it will have like I'll lose these nine rings, but the rest will still be intact. There's just there's no reason to throw anything else out just because this one didn't completely turn out. And I, I, I really I do this on a lot of projects. I I always sort of look for the smallest thing I can do and still, still get away with it. So it's a little bit like if you're making uh, granny squares, and you're sort of sewing them together afterwards. I really think that is a good way to work, especially if you are a beginner and you really want things to be nice and tidy and you don't want to sort of compromise and sort of go okay this one is not good but it is attached to the rest and if i throw this out i'll gonna i'm gonna have to throw my entire blanket or afghan or in this case your entire lace piece out it's it's just it's a it's a good way to work to sort of have smaller pieces and then you can always join them you can if you wanted to you could have joined the the picos in this this <laughs> this lace is based on this pattern that you've seen me make before, which is three picots with five uh, nuts in between, and then there is a chain of ten. So instead we're just going to make two picots and five knots in between. You can... this is just how I'm going to attach it to my, my veil, and you can choose to do different patterns to finish it, and they're all on, on my block. We need one shuttle for this. Then of course a crochet needle. This is just a tiny little. I got this at a like secondhand store, and I'm I'm completely in love with it. There are a couple of of these, and they're just so nice and sort of it's wood and it's it's great. Then of course we need the the yarn and the glue that I talked about. And of course you're also going to need some tool and and some sort of clips to. To attach it to. To start, you're going to knot the yarn together like this. If you just wound it, you you'll just continue from where you are. But I have been making a couple of these before, so I'm going to knot it. And if you really wanted to, you could wind it for every for every piece. I think maybe that would it would look a little bit nicer. It wouldn't make that big of a difference, but it, it would clean it up a little bit. Start by making a ring. Oh, and by the way, you can do this in little tatting too. You will just do the same knots and then you will you will make it into a ring afterwards. There really isn't anything in this pattern that would be hard for people in needle tatting. It'll be the same pattern and the same diagram. So here we are, you're going to do five double knots. And so that's five, and you're going to do a pico. And again, if you if you want this to be a little bit neater, perhaps just get a, a thing to make the, the picos the same size. Because again, it's your wedding. <laughs> So three, and four, and then the fifth, and then another pico. And it's this pico, the last one, that you're going to join the next ring to. So it's not completely crucial that these are uniform. Okay, 
So now do five double knots to finish this. So because we're going to join in the in the pico, it, it really doesn't matter which size it is, as long as it's big enough for joining. So here we are. And you're just going to close the ring, or if you're doing needle tatting, you're going to knot it into a ring, I think you... Now we need to move to the next ring. So you're going to grab the, the yarn that is attached to the ball, and you're going to pull the the ring that we just made towards yourself. It's going to... the picos needs to point to you. And then you're going to to do 10 double knots on this chain. Or you could do 5 double knots, a pico, and then 5 double knots. If you wanted more thrilly... frilly? Sorry. <laughs> With an F. Frilly look. I just... Uh, I don't know. I thought it was a little too much for this, and there's not a lot of three picots in this pattern. But it's it's completely up to you. As long as you don't change your mind halfway. So that was ten. So just scoot the the nuts together a little bit. And then you're going to turn again so that your the previously <laughs> your previous ring, I was trying to say. Your previous ring is ring is supposed to point away from you now, so this way. Now we're going to do another ring. And it's going to be exactly the same as the previous ring. So we're going to do five double knots and then join to the last pico on the previous ring. So yeah, just remember to unwind your shuttle every once in a while. Four, five. Now we're going to join, which is why I'm. <laughs> I really want this shuttle to not be completely wound up. So go through the pico, get the the thread. Make sure it doesn't curl up on itself, and then put the shuttle through. And this is by far the most difficult thing in needle, in not in needle setting. It's really easy in needle setting. In shuttle setting, this is the this is the hardest thing. But I will say, I I don't think I've joined once in this pattern where it didn't work. In the beginning, when I started tatting, it was really hard, and it would be... I've, I've ripped out joints sort of 9 out of 10 times, I think. But after practicing, and especially after doing a couple of bigger projects, it really has become sort of easier. And I think one of the, the little things that you can do is do not pull on the back thread. That's the one that's around my nails, sort of. If you pull on the shuttle, you can sometimes um, you can you can turn the knot the right way. So if it if it's a little tight or if it looks like it's it's not going to still work, pull on the shuttle and pull on the thread that's around in front of you, but never never pull directly on the other side of the knot. I don't know if that helps. I hope <laughs> it was really it was a really big deal to me in the beginning because I I, I could I could do the knots and I could do the, the the rings and everything, but the joints were just so hard and it just hit me the other day when I was doing I've I've done yeah I don't know how many I, I've did I've I've done a lot of of these little pieces with nine rings on them and it just. It never fails anymore, and it's really nice to to know that you can you can join without potentially losing the work. So here we are again. You're going to finish the ring and then pull it tight. And we're just going to pretend as if I finished all nine rings. You can of course do more rings on your pieces if you want. I just all of mine have nine rings and eight chain chains chain. So 
So in order to finish it, I'll just get a pair of scissors and I'll... Oh yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll start by nodding. Nodding the end. You don't have to do this. All of tatting, all of tatting is nodding, so that doesn't make sense. You you make tatting knots. Therefore, there is not really a chance that it's going to unravel. But I am. I I really don't want it to. So I I always nod the ends. And. Oh yeah, I. <laughs> Can you see that the different colors? I grabbed the wrong shuttle and it was filled with sort of a little bit bigger and a little bit darker yarn. But it, this is where I grab my glue and I'm just going to to cut the ends as short as I as I'm comfortable with. And then I will glue down both of them. And it's not going to be completely neat, but because it's so small, it, it really doesn't show up if you turn them inwards. So basically you can sort of hide it a little bit. Of course not completely. People will still, if they go very close to it, they can see this. But it you <laughs> normal normally you wouldn't you wouldn't really see it. So here I'm just you should wait a little bit. To, for the glue to become tacky and then you can grab something like this is just a, a needle for sewing and just pat down the glue and it's it's much easier to to get it to stick when it's tacky So here we are. Now you're you're sure that they're not going to unravel, and it also looks a lot nicer. And you can you can join the pieces together now and have them look as if they're sort of continuous. So th this is the size of piece that I'm going to make, and I'll just be sewing it together to my tool which I have which I have cut out in the correct size and shape for this and then I've made these kentashi flowers for the <laughs> the clips and as I said on at the at the back I've made some a little bit of a different piece. I've just it's just more rings basically. It's not and the the bigger pieces are also on the pattern if you want the diagram for those. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm actually not getting married. I I made this because I get I got a a message from someone asking for a pattern for this. So I, I yeah, I don't know what how <laughs> I don't know what to do with a with a veil now. Thank you so so much for watching and I hope to see you